This is Yolita Brilliant and Big Cat. Which is Nicholas Relation. All right. I team ET, right? And Brilliant Massage and Skin. Thank you for joining episode 18. One eight. Big number. Yeah. Be able to buy cigarettes. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah, we're growing. <laughs> we're now an adult almost. Yeah. Most podcasts don't make it to episode, I believe, was it like five or ten? So, I think most people just give up quite early. So I think we're in the top 5% now, just for sticking out more than a year. It's more than a year and a half now. And today we wanted to talk a little bit about the mindset and staying durable maintenance versus pushing yourself. And this can apply to business, your work, your fitness, the way you um, interact with people, your social skills, like everything, what it has to do growing out of your comfort zone to become better mm -hmm. and going through some pains to become better. Because, you know, humans are, we're, we're creatures of habit. Most people liked their routine and, and, and having a routine is not necessarily a bad thing. But what Yolita is talking about is, you know, maybe breaking that routine a little bit to kind of see what else is out there outside of your daily grind, so to speak. Yeah, getting out of your bubble, you know. Yeah. It's like I did a um, Q&A for franchise this morning also, you know, and we don't know what we don't know. Like there is opportunities out there and they might be scary. We might want to stay in our comfort zone, maybe working job that we don't really like. But if we just are willing to go through a little bit of pain, through a little bit uncertainty, take some calculated risks. It's amazing how much we grow personally mm -hmm. and financially also it can be. It can be physically, like if you take up a new sport, a new hobby. It's amazing how we transform into this new person. And I'll give like a quick example of, you know, something kind of out of my comfort zone, so to speak. So, uh, you know, I like doing home renovations. I consider myself a fairly handy person. I'm comfortable with tools. I'm comfortable with power tools, etc. But I, for instance, I don't have a lot of experience with vinyl siding, right? Like, I, I know I can take it off. I can replace a piece here and there. But I've never really done a vinyl siding project. So something a little bit out of my comfort zone, you know, I did some research on the internet, watched a couple of YouTube videos essentially, and you know, now I'm helping, or kind of my dad is helping me do the vinyl siding on the shed at my parents' house. And where I'm going with this story is, you know, it's something outside my comfort zone, it's something that's a little bit new. Obviously, you still want to do a good job, right? You know, you don't want it to be like a ski slope when you're putting this stuff up. But, you know, doing vinyl siding on a shed, you know, it doesn't need to be perfect, right? And nothing's going to ever be perfect, you know, even yeah. on a brand new house. But it gets you out of your comfort zone, gets you working with some different materials, it gets you thinking differently, figuring out how to cut you know different material and it gives you that much more skill so am i going to be vinyl siding buildings for expert <laughs> no definitely not but it's nice to know the process and how it works and you know when you end up do hiring someone to do a large project you know it's good to be an, an informed consumer right when you go to buy a car you know the salesperson they should be giving you the correct information and answering your questions and telling you, you know, exactly what it is. But you want to go in there know, knowing what you're looking at, right? Yeah, and, uh, you know, we build sometimes around us these, like, emotional safety nets or financial safety nets where we don't want to look like a fool starting something new or don't want to, like, ruin maybe what we already have that we kind of happy but we know maybe it could be better but oh it's okay because i don't want to make it even worse you know so or you know or getting to a certain point you know where we just maintain for example okay well my body let's say got used to running three miles with no issues and i keep running always just three miles that same speed but if i wanted stronger get better i need to try to increase my speed to, so i can break up some of those muscle fibers so they grow back stronger and i'm actually become a faster runner you know and maybe i could run further without getting tired as much so we need to realize these patterns that can hold us some time into not ideal situation not progressing where we could be right our potential mm -hmm. and the thing is you know don't be afraid to as yolita said look like a fool right like you know, I'll go back to the Spartan race that we did about a year ago. You know, my whole goal with the Spartan race was to do my best. And if my best was finish, that was awesome. If my best was I went a, a mile and I my body wouldn't let me go any farther, then, then, then that's my best. But the thing is, is 
oh, well, you went, you only did a mile. Wow, you must have looked like a fool. If someone says that to you, it's like, well, I didn't see you. Yeah, you know? I did more than you did. You know, I, you know, they weren't getting up early. They didn't drive, I don't know, what was it, 45 minutes yeah. to an hour, you know, and, you know, so... Per- it, you participated. That's yeah. already more than someone that stayed on a couch. Yeah, you know? and, you know, I remember back to, like, early days of elementary and middle school of, um, you know, like, gym class or fitness class or whatever you called it, and it's like, wow, some people can do, you know, a five-minute mile. It's like, great. You know, it takes me seven minutes. Well, to they do it. train, but they, you know? they dedicate their lives. Yeah, to train but the thing for too that, is, yeah. you know, like at the gym that we go to, there's a sign in the indoor track that says, you know, a five minute mile is just as long as a ten minute mile. You know, yeah. So everyone works on their own level. The people that say, "Wow, you're going to look like a fool," I'm like, "Well, you're saying that I'm going to look like a fool, and you're sitting on the couch eating Swiss cake rolls." Yeah. You know, <laughs> at least I'm out there trying my best. Well, it's fixed versus growth mindset. So fixed mi- mindset is that, oh. I don't need that. I don't want to challenge myself. I'm okay the way things are. I don't want to find out how much I'm capable of. And growth mindset is always learning something new, is every day becoming better at what you do. eating you know could be improve working on improving your diet could be working on improving your fitness could be working getting better at your job getting better at your relationship with your spouse you know that's like the growth mindset that it's not the perfection we're not saying to like as far as growth to look for perfection but in action actually is only way to to assure that you're not gonna get any better yeah, and the thing too is, if say you want to, you know, lose weight or eat better or whatever, you know, I would love to be able to go to the gym and you're there for 30 minutes and you lose 20 pounds and you gain a bunch of muscle and then you go home and you're ready to go. Uh, you know, obviously that's not realistic, right? But you know, if you want to lose weight or you want to eat better or, or whatever your goal is, take the the final goal, whatever that is, if it's lose 10 pounds or whatever, and then break it down into a lot of smaller, little, more bite-sized pieces, and that's kind of like a growth mindset too of. You know you where you want to go, and knowing where you want to go and how you're going to get there is really half the battle. But, you know, like, at night, it's like, oh, man, I could really use some, like, ice cream or a cookie or something like that. And, you know, it's like, okay, well, the next time on your fitness journey, when you want a cookie or something before bed, drink a glass of water, right? That will put something in your stomach, maybe kind of cure that, what you're looking for, for something to kind of eat. And that's a step right there. That's a step in the right direction. I mean... Small steps, yeah. big changes. Yeah, humans are, we're all, have just gotten used to being dehydrated. I like this also saying, like, you always overestimate how like people underestimate how much they can do in one year and how much they can do in 10 years mm-hmm. like how little they can do what's the what, word of- i think what you're saying is you know people say like oh well in a year i'll, I'll be I'll, i can lose five pounds mm-hmm. in a year yeah but in actuality you can easily lose 10 20 15 pounds you know i think is what you're saying is don't underestimate your ability to make something happen if you really want it to happen yeah but also what i'm just looking to say there's a saying like how much you can change in a decade and sometimes we think well nothing will change much in a year but if you add all those 10 year in like one year increments into a decade actually a lot changes a lot changes yeah and you know think about what you've done in the past year right and you know, and I'm going to use an example for, for us. You know, we bought a six-unit multifamily property. At, for We closed end of February, so essentially March 1st. So from March 1st until now, which is the end of October, that's what, six, seven months? We've almost renovated. We're finishing up the fifth renovation on that property. We did substantial, and I don't want to say the number because it's, sometimes it's a little hard to swallow that number, of, you know, basement, foundation, structural work that's not necessarily pretty, you know, like it's, but you know, it's what has to be done to maintain the value of your property. And I was just kind of... And usability. Correct. Yeah. And, you know, I was just kind of thinking the other day when I was running around doing whatever, and I was in the car kind of just thinking about things and I'm like, oh, when you kind of think about just this one property, you know, all these renovations, you know, all this work that has gone into it, that that's just part of everything going on. So, you know, a lot of people are like, oh my God, you did all of that? Like, is that what you do? And I'm like, no. Like, you know, we've got jobs, we've got businesses, we've got, you know... Hustles. All, and, yeah. and we just have stuff, too, like, you know, spending time with yeah, family. We're travel. Going, yeah, we're going to this little Halloween thing with our nephews tonight that, you know... So 
you know, is there times that we kind of sometimes sacrifice? Yeah, of course. And and you know, it's it's what are you willing to sacrifice now yeah. to improve your situation? Yeah. Later. And um, it's also learning how to leverage. You know, you learn to find the right people, the le- right partners, the right contractors, and if you keep trying, everything falls into place, and it's a learning process. You know, we're not afraid when having a pain of growth mindset is uh, you gotta be not afraid of some failures and some criticism because it doesn't matter at the end of the day you know most people only care about themselves the most and even if someone does criticize you on something guess what 10 minutes they're probably already on to the next thing like nobody's sitting there obsessing about you so it doesn't matter if you like messed up or failed or embarrassed it's not the end of the world and through that process you learn and become better and you know during that process too unfortunately there's going to be not necessarily money down the toilet but you know you're going to spend some money university you You, know you pay to to learn something yeah you know like i'll use google ads as an example like you know when i was kind of first doing some google ads it was essentially spending money on google ads to get spam well i've done that before you know and that's just part of the the learning yeah Yeah, the system so yeah it's learning but then you become resilient and more adaptable so you kind of pay to pay to learn a little bit in the beginning part of the process because how else are you going to become better if you're not going to try? Mm-hmm. There is no other way. It's, you know, it can be physical discomfort. It could be mental discomfort that we have to, like, some people say, well, you know, I can't um, do this particular thing because I'm not good with people. Or I'm not good answering the phone. Or I'm not good... Um, on numbers or I'm not good but maybe that's a challenge you need to get over maybe that's the one skill you just need to do it if you even don't want to or don't like to because you know successful people don't think about only I want to do what I want to do when I want to do it it's sometimes you got to do what you don't want to do like there were things like we have to have a talk maybe with the tenant let's just give this example maybe we don't want to have that talk but it's a necessary talk or with employees sometimes you know I'd rather be like doing something else than have to give like criticism to someone or like it's there are tasks that are not fun in certain you know roles but it has to be done in order to have that result that you're looking for yeah and if there's something dread that you're dreading having to do like what I do it's, it's it's called like eat the frog right so if it's something that i don't want to deal with i know it's going to be a pain in the butt or i just have quote unquote better things to do if i can do it just as soon as i get up and just get it out of the way and then you're off to the next thing and then it's not you're not like it's not simmering yeah it's not like on your shoulders and you know what you get it get it done get it out of the way and maybe yeah it doesn't go exactly the way you want it or it, you know something else comes up but you know what that, that's just life right yeah you know you go in to bring your car in for an oil change and all of a sudden you know they're they find other stuff and it, it's just part of the game and working in it where you know a, a lot of things in it are emergencies come up all the time you know there was a large issue that i was dealing with Friday morning, or no, excuse me, Thursday morning, first thing, you know, and I've got users panicking, right? Yeah, or we had our website also had technical issue yeah. that was handed down for like almost a week. Yeah, and the thing is, is, you know, terrible. you take the emergency, you go through the process, you be methodical, and, you know, even for me, you know, I'm trying to figure it out, I've got, you know, TAC on the phone trying to help me, and people are like, so what's the deal, what's the deal? And I'm like, it's broken. When's it going to be working? When's it going to be working? I don't know. Hopefully soon, you know? And it's just taking that calm, cool approach to it that... Cool like a cucumber. You're yeah. accomplished more. And, you know, yeah. a lot of times people that are kind of looking on from the outside, like, well, we'll just fix it. Just fix it. Just do this, this, and this. I'm like, well, hold on. We're going to do one thing at a time so we know what fixed it. Because the worst thing is having something get resolved and you don't know why it got resolved. Because... Now in the future, if the same issue happens during a routine firmware update, much more adapt to to deal with it, you know? And then you have, you know, that much more skill set. But 
you know, a, a fire drill isn't necessarily a, a bad thing, right? It's the way that you handle it that can turn it into yeah. a bad, bad thing. Yeah, and then you come out more uh, fulfilled, like sense of accomplishment. Hey, I overcame this. And when this happens next time, mm-hmm. I will be even more prepared. I will know even better how to handle, how to address, how to fix this faster next time, right? Yeah. Well, like, for example, our website, it was, I over-exaggerated. It was not down for a week. But, you know, like a couple of days there and there with an intermittent issues. Issues and um, so we we learn how to prevent that in the future. So I feel like we came out better out of it than before uh, and more resilient. So and sometimes during processes like that, you're reliant on third party. You know, That's we needed true. some provider, the data center. Essentially, we kind of had to wait for the engineers to do their portion, and it's difficult, it's frustrating, it's draining, but that's the process, right? You have to follow the process. And, you know, throughout that process, you keep asking, hey, is there any updates? Are you waiting for anything from us? And maybe the update is, there is no update. That's the update, right? You know, like during a troubleshooting issue, especially ones that go on sometimes for more time than you would like, sometimes the update is, there is no update. And and that's the deal. Yeah, and that's going to be times that are going to need higher intensity, higher effort, you know, and that's where you become better at what you do. And mm-hmm. that, that, like, forces you get out of that comfort zone and routine, you know, mm-hmm. because you can't be snoozing when things happen like that. So sometimes it's good to shake you up a little almost, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And also, also as, as we're talking here about the success and how you have to be willing to take some sacrifices, maybe sometimes at the beginning, uh, in the, or, you know, on the journey when you're trying to accomplish things like for example like you know i would say like a, i guess i would call it a hobby right it's not our main job but doing like rentals residential rentals it's like our investment um, strategy that we utilize but it's also almost like of, a hobby as, part of like a business strategy. yeah part of the investment strategy but we're we really into it that we like for example we rented our place that we lived so now we're temporarily staying at my husband's parents until we mm-hmm. finish the renovation in the place that we're moving into because you know with the contractors you never know it gets delayed the materials like gets shipped gets get, can get damaged doing the shipping then you have to like order a new one so you know you have to be willing to go through things like this sometimes you know there's a saying uh, you, you gotta eat shit so to say sometimes you know but, the, but the, the thing is is you know it doesn't matter and like you know for me personally I have a vast amount of experience setting up remote offices, retail stores, pizza stores, restaurants, cafes, all from an IT perspective. I mean, I, that's what I've been doing for 20 plus years. And you would think like, okay, after doing 50 of these different stores, you'd just have it down to a science. You'd have it down to a process. And do I? Yeah, there is. But you know what? Every time I fly into a remote location to do a setup, I'm like... <sighs> Here we go again. The electricians, you know, none of the cabling is labeled, you know, or the cash wrap isn't done. You know, the millwork is late, you know, and at first it's like it quickly becomes overwhelming that, oh, my God, what are we going to do? And the answer is what we're going to do is you're going to do what you can. That's all you can do sometimes. And you, you got to wait. If you're waiting on other people, yeah, I mean, make contact with them. Say, hey, like, can you give me an ETA? What's going on? Is there anything we can help with? I mean, at one location, it was like, yeah, we have the stuff. It's in the warehouse. We're about an hour drive from your location we can get there in two days i'm like well that's not going to work and it's like okay so what do we do we we go to enterprise we rent a tahoe we drive an hour load it up and then come back and unload it is that necessarily part of what your responsibility is not really but you have to do that sometimes you know and just gotta kinda, go out of your way yeah to you make gotta it get it you know just get stuff done so that it's not holding up you at the end of the yeah, day yeah and uh yeah and then you know it's um people trust you people respect you people know you're gonna do what's necessary to make it happen to mm-hmm. deliver for example like the it services right. you know um that's how you're gonna get good reviews for your services and business and respect yep, yep. um and, and of course, you know, like, um, like we're not saying you gotta like push, push, push hard all the time. There's times, like Nick said, you know, you got you find time for relaxation too. You have to. You have to. You recharge. You yeah, like to. get a massage, get a facial, go for a walk, go for a run. You know, do some yoga. Even just you know, like it's very easy when you're really busy and really stressed to be like. I'll just eat like a a nut bar or eat that for lunch, you know, or whatever. We're going to be done, you know, later this afternoon. I'm just going to skip lunch. Yeah. And 
one of the biggest pieces of advice that I give to people, especially if you're traveling somewhere for, for business or work or whatever, is try to stick to a, a routine of eating, you know, eating at normal times. Yeah, like non-negotiable. Yeah. And, you know, like there's been times where I, it's been just the stress level is just at a thousand percent and it's like well all right it's lunch time and i'm like you know what we're gonna go and take lunch we're gonna go we're gonna take an hour lunch we're gonna relax and then we're gonna come back to it you know and then you kind of relax a little bit clears your mind and then you kind of go in with a pr fresh perspective of oh we were trying to figure out how to do that and all we have to do is just move it over six inches and no one's gonna know because it doesn't it's, it doesn't matter on the plan there's no yeah. actual location yeah and then it's done you that's know? why a fresh set of eyes sometimes yeah. is so good and like having a manager come and look at like what someone's doing sometimes it's like oh wow didn't even think of that you 100%. know um yeah um and you know if there is definitely tasks that you totally hate like you can outsource them you know also but what we're saying you know that sometimes it's beneficial to to challenge yourself and try to do or learn mm -hmm. what you what you really have to to take yourself to the next level even if you don't like it you know we're not saying you have to do everything you don't like but doing some things that will take you to next level if you just learn this one thing that you don't like you'll realize oh it's not that bad actually i don't know why i was so resistant you well, know the, to do it's this it's the unknown i think yeah. for a lot of people and myself included and i'll give you an example like it was a couple of, or it was probably longer than that six seven years ago we went to an amusement park and it was you know all these kind of scary roller coasters and these loops and all this you know everything and I'm like oh that's gonna be that's gonna be really scary and then you get on and you're like ah that's it wasn't that big of a deal and then there was this one roller coaster that it didn't even go upside down it was basically just up and down there was no sharp corners or anything and I Yolita probably remembers we were going down the first dip and as you go over the top you look down and essentially just looks like you're going to go right into the ground and I'm like scared out of my mind and it was kind of funny I just thinking back about it now it's what I thought was going to be really scary and really daunting was not and what i actually thought was going to be like oh whatever yeah this little roller coaster thing yeah, yeah. like we'll, we'll do it like yeah whatever what's the big deal easy yeah. yeah and then i'm like looking down at like my demise of this roller coaster obviously it's not going to yeah. go into the ground but at the the time your brain's like what are you doing you know yeah yeah and you don't know until you try yeah. it and sometimes we have certain perceptions from like the society or someone else telling us or a family or a friend saying like something is one way but then until you actually experience it for yourself mm -hmm. that's the only way to know well you know technology and carpentry and things like that that comes easy to me right i enjoy it i can understand it, it makes sense to me it's very easy for me to other people it's just so overwhelming and daunting but you know but maybe they're like social skills are yeah easy you know to them. It, it always you know people naturally gravitate to certain things more easily than or others. like public speaking or yeah, something like you know that. but um like uh patching red oak wood flooring at the one of our rentals i'd never done it before i mean i had kind of helped my folks and other people just kind of as a helper and i was like oh man this is going to be really difficult and then i started and i was like this actually isn't that bad like you you kind of like think it's going to be daunting and then you start actually doing it and did i mess up a couple of pieces 100 percent. you know did i end up being like oh i cut this thing the wrong length and now i just throw it away and you know is there a cost to that yeah i mean probably each stick i don't know a couple bucks so yeah. you know, it's not that big of a deal but you know it adds up at the end of the day but it's like okay you know but now i know right <laughs> you know there's a joke in it for ears quote unquote ears that you mount on the side of network switches that it's very common the first time you do it you do it backwards and you know what i did it once <laughs> and my coworker at the time was like happens to us all but you're never going to do it again are you and i'm like here i am never you know yeah and it's same with business you know it's same with real estate like business let's say hiring people or having um marketing figured out like that's that's gets e this seems like it could be very complicated but with the right education like it's not it's gets easier over time as right. you challenge yourself with yep. it and the more experience you get yeah um yeah, did you have anything else to share? I think the biggest thing that I think of, you know, is that, you know, life is, is short, right? Unfortunately. And um, if there's anybody listening that knows of Warren Miller, his biggest saying was, if you don't do it this year, you're going to be one year older when you do it next year. So 
I'm not saying jump off the diving board without seeing if there's water. But you can kind of peer over it and take a, okay, it looks pretty good. Calculated I think, I think there's enough water down there. You know, or, hmm, not sure. Well, I'm going to go down from the diving board and check. Oh, okay. I'm going to go back up and it looks good. You know, and then you just get more comfortable with the process, you know, with renovations. If, for me, I have a lot more experience now than I did when we first started doing them. They yeah. go a lot quicker. The same thing with setting up computers or network accounts or migrations or whatever, you know. Every time you do it, you get a little bit more experience. And are you going to run into issues? Of course doing a migration this weekend for some email mailboxes and look there's an issue you know I'm like oh, this is going to be easy I've done this a million times and of course there's there's issues and, that, and that's just the deal and you have to figure it out and if you can't figure it out then ask someone else for help if they can't help you then start googling you know and eventually yeah, you YouTube. know you'll, you'll figure it out right it might take you a long time but you'll figure it out Right, everything is figure outable. Nothing is rocket science. Like, you could be the president of the United States, you could be an astronaut, you could be doctor. If you were at the right time, got the right education, right place, right circumstances. So, like, everything is possible, right? So, it's not like these people that, like, made um, multi millions that they're somehow aliens out of this planet. They're not. They're yeah. humans like us, and everything is possible. One step at a time, you can really accomplish a lot. There's a famous saying from Steve Jobs about you know there's kind of this societal norm of kind of stay in your lane don't bounce around too much because sometimes kind of, yeah the system wants you to know, be like a follower not yeah. a leader and you know and he said it's very easy to break that mindset or that mold when you realize that the pe people that built this country this business or whatever are, are not necessarily any smarter than you are right you know I work with some businesses that I'm like like how did how have these people even just gotten through life because they literally have no clue how to turn it like literally don't even know how to turn on a computer and i'm like you know what they've got five eight ten million dollar business and i think really the only thing that well they outsource that i think the only thing that really differentiated them from a lot of other people when they were building their business is they were willing to kind of put themselves out there a little bit take the risk yeah, exactly. Um, um, you know, because um, there's also a saying like, you take risk or you will work for somebody that did take a risk, you know. So either way, you're going to work for someone that took risks to yeah. create something or you're going to be the one that's taking risks to create something. So someone has to take some risk at some point to like mm -hmm. propel the society into progress and inventing like even like new medical devices or traveling into space or new car components. Like it's all yeah. like risks and it's everywhere. Yeah. And I think, you know, as we kind of wrap up this episode is, if you've taken risks and it didn't work out, l let us know what it was. But, and, but if you've yeah. taken risks and it did work out, let us know too, because, you know, it's always interesting. I always like human emotions and just human interactions, because unlike computers and, and IT stuff, humans are very, very, very unpredictable. And it's very interesting, um, you know, like my dad, unfortunately, you know, nicked his, his hand doing some woodworking. And, you know, for me, I'm like, oh, well, let me see, you know, I want to see pictures, how many stitches. And, and my sister's like, I don't want to see anything. I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to know anything. I just want to know if, if, if everything's okay type deal. So it's just interesting sometimes people with, you know, very similar upbringings and backgrounds, how, you know, dissimilar things can be. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, please share. And, you know, even if you do fail some things, it's just one step closer that to, than someone that never tried. So mm -hmm. if you at least failed once or twice, you're already closer to the victory than someone who didn't even take that yep. first step to try. So Yeah. And one more example before we hang up. So we're, um, we have an apartment that's coming up for rent somewhat soon. It's unfortunately at a bad time for apartment rentals. I mean, who wants to move during the holidays and the winter? But that, that's that's life, right? That's a problem. You just, part of just, the deal. Part of the yeah. deal that comes up so you know start advertising it and you know put it on a couple facebook groups and then the amount of comments of just trash talking everything about the apartment about the price about landlords just in everything and i'm just like like you know it's like i want to like reply back to these people and just you know give them peace of my mind i'm like what, what's the effort these people are wasting their time yeah. 
arguing about something that isn't even they theirs. They have no control of. And you know what? At the end of the day, I'm like, these people are probably renters themselves. They didn't go out and stick their neck out and put literally... And especially oh, yeah, that unit, absolutely. you know, that my dad and I renovated together, you know, literal blood, sweat, and tears into that, and, and a lot of money, too. You will never hear a person criticizing another person that's doing better than you. It's always people that are doing worse than you that criticize, that criticize you. Like, you won't see other landlords criticizing, you know, other landlords right also there are tenants that don't criticize landlords um because they have a different mindset they have growth mindset maybe someday they will be a landlord themselves you know like if you're gonna criticize rich people as evil you'll never be rich it's just a part of the deal because you associate that as being bad yeah and you know one thing that i was talking to um a client who's also a builder and also has some rentals and you know we're just talking about rentals and i was like you know we got this this unit coming up and he's like oh why are they they leaving or whatever i'm like oh i get you know they bought a house or you know another tenant was i think they were buying a house plus they wanted to have kids you know another couple they you know, need to move back to california because they wanted to start like a medical clinic and it's like you know i'm happy for all these tenants you know that they're furthering their lives yeah, and you know exactly. being happy yeah. and you know tom was like yeah Essentially, what you're reaping is you've rented to good tenants. Yeah. Tenants that want to further themselves. And he was like, that's the deal. You find good tenants. You've got them for a couple of years. And then they're going to buy a place or they're going to... Higher turnover with higher end places. It's normal. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because they've got got a better job. They're not dead beats, you know, that expecting government to, like, give them free housing or something. They're actually working hard to... I'm not talking about people disabled. I think they should get assistance and things like that. But I'm seeing people that are fully capable. They're, you know, able to work and everything. But sometimes they don't want to utilize all all the brain power and physical abilities that they could create something great. They just choose to complain instead and bad mouth others. That's a big pet peeve of mine personally is Yolita and I, we work a lot. A lot of it people don't ever see. It's a lot of late nights, arguments, you know, running back and forth, running around. But we're doing it all to better our situation. We're willing to put the work in. You know, people that want to complain about their situation or, you know, well, this, that, you know, I would do this, you know, like... Or like, or they're saying, well, how can I, why can I not, like, be able to afford this and that? But then, you know, you're only willing to work not even full time, so... I'm, like, working three jobs. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I, I wish that we had, like... Uh, at some point maybe there will be some universal income and like all even better economy for everyone but you got to do with what you working with you know if economy is what like right like that but you know even at all times there are people that had something they had to earn it like it's not um it's it's the way it works you know you have to put effort and earn it so thank you so much for joining check us out youtube uh, spotify our instagram facebook and uh yeah we'll see you in the next episode have Have a a great one day